fellas welcome back to another video so in this video we're going to be going over this guitar right here quite a few of you guys asking um as time been going on where this guitar has been so i'm going to go over that in this whole video for you guys and explain kind of what happened with this because um unfortunately i had some issues with this guitar but there was a very nice resolution with this whole thing so i'm going to get into it right now with you guys so if you guys remember Ola sent me this guitar as a gift back in, um, I think it was like April of 2020, so it was a few years ago. And uh, can't be any happier. Thanks again, Ola. I've said that, said that a million times. Cannot thank Ola enough for that. Gave me the opportunity to uh, not only try one of his seven strings, but particularly one with the Evertune because uh, I was very curious about it. So um, I'll provide that video in the description as well. You guys can check that out where I... Basically started crying on camera because I was just so freaking happy nobody's ever sent me a gift like this before. It was, it was pretty overwhelming to say the least. You know, uh, made me very happy of course. But um, about this guitar, I did everything that I possibly could. Step by step tutorials, everything. Went over as much detail as possible to try to get this thing to set up and intonate properly. And I just, for the life of me, could never quite get it on this guitar and it just gave me nothing but issues gave me nothing but headaches so it definitely uh tarnished my first impressions of how i feel about this bridge uh so a little bit of time goes on and i did some recordings with it i was still able to kind of do some half-ass recordings with this guitar because when i tracked with it, it did sound really killer and everything uh plays great you know no complaints there whatsoever but um as far as this thing staying in tune it just was not happening so um as I wore the strings out and, you know, uh, a little bit of time went on, I decided that, uh, that the thing was just kind of just hanging on my wall, not getting any play anymore. Because uh, I was just so disappointed with uh, the bridge, the instability with tuning and everything. So I just decided that I was just going to take it to a professional. And I got a really good guy that I deal with. Um, any of you guys familiar with Motor City Guitar in Waterford, Michigan? Scott, the uh, guitar tech there, phenomenal dude. Um, ended up taking the project on for me. I thought it was just going to be just an intonation, set the guitar up, you know, because I couldn't quite figure it out myself. So uh, I basically took my headaches and <laughs> gave them to Scott. But uh, yeah, so I dropped the guitar off to him. You know, I get busy with work and everything. And uh, like a couple weeks go by, once he catches up on uh, all the work that he had, he gives me a phone call. And, um, you know, I had to call him back because I had a voicemail from him basically telling me that. It was more than just a setup that this thing uh, had all kinds of issues going on with it that I was not even aware of. A um, couple in particular, I don't have the paperwork in the room with me. I got it, um, I got it out in my living room. But uh, basically, off the top of my head, what I can remember that was going on with this guitar was there was a kink in the neck right around the 6, 7 string, um, some kind of warp issue or something that he had to kind of address and take care of the best he could. It needed a whole new like fret re-leveling. There was frets that were just popping up uh, randomly in places, and it just yeah, it needed a, a lot of TLC in that department. The whole thing had to be redone. Uh, there was an issue with, and I remember noticing this when I first got the guitar, but I didn't really pay too much attention to it. Was um, the saddle on the seventh string was spaced out significantly away from the remaining six strings. And I, I, like I said, I noticed it, but I didn't really um, give it that much thought. So he had to kind of uh, play around with that. But as far as um, the intonation went on this guitar, getting it to uh, my drop G tuning that I wanted, um, he had to basically redo the whole uh, bridge system, the Evertune. There was a lot more going on with the guitar than, you know, as, again, guys, this is just off the top of my head. I mean... He's the wizard when it comes to all this, like all the tech details and issues that were really going on with this thing. You know, obviously he's not here to explain that, but I'm just kind of regurgitating off the top of my head what I remember going on with this thing. And there was a couple other things as well. Um, obviously the wood shrinking and stuff like that coming from Indonesia to, uh, you know, my climate over here. Uh, the wood shrank a bit and, you know, left some pretty nasty rough fret edges and probably beat the shit out of his tools as far as him having to uh, file them down and make them, you know, comfortable again because these are stainless steel frets. So probably wore the crap out of his tools. Um, so that had to be addressed as well. Obviously, you know, um, polished all the frets, clean the board, oil the, oil the fretboard, do all that kind of stuff that they usually do. 
And then I'm trying to remember some of the other stuff that was going on with this guitar, but um, fortunately, I have not had a cracking issue on this fretboard yet. I'm, I know a lot of, uh, actually, my Washburn version of uh, the Solar that I've had for quite a few years, that one started to do it, and um, it's still kind of cracking to this day. But I haven't had that issue with this guitar, uh, luckily. The typical, um, right here on the logo, the peeling of the uh, Solar logo, you know, I unfortunately have that, but that doesn't really bother me a whole bunch. Just as long as, you know, the guitar is playable, which at the time it was not. Um, but Scott uh, did, did me right with this. The resolution behind this whole story is um, when I finally had time, I decided, you know, after uh, sitting on it for a while, because I got really busy with work, and I got a hold of him. I said, listen, I'm, uh, I'm finally catching up, because this was going to cost me a good few hundred dollars worth of work on this too. when it was all said and done to actually make it playable and get it back to me. Uh, once I finally caught up and everything, I, I told him, yeah, just go ahead and, you know, uh, I'll give you the green light on it and just, uh, yeah, take care of it for me. And then uh, when, when you're ready with it, I'll come by and pick it up. So I ended up, uh, a little bit of time goes by, I think it was like maybe a week or so when he finally caught up to it uh, after I gave him the go ahead. He, uh, he called me and he said that, hey, listen, I was talking to the owner, which is Marty at Motor City. He said he was showing me uh, your unboxing video on this guitar and I saw everything in the video, uh, just how much that guitar meant to you. You know, it was given you as a gift. And actually, I remember uh, Scott telling me, you know, like he said, you know, where did you get it? Um, I would reach out to uh, where you got it from and uh, just see if they can take care of it for you. But obviously, that was not feasible because... You know, this was given to me from Ola, so I couldn't be like email or uh, message Ola and say, hey, remember that guitar you sent me, you know, over two years ago? Uh, I'm having issues with it, and can you take care of it? Like, this is my problem now. I had to address it. I had to take care of it. So what's right is right, you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, I told him that uh, basically I wasn't going to be able to do that, and he knew that. Uh, he said, man, I had no idea. Like, we didn't know you had the following that you do on YouTube, and um, I... I kind of feel like really bad seeing how much you liked uh, the guitar, you know, how much you fell in love with it, what it meant to you when you unboxed it. Uh, just basically getting to that level of uh, where you're at with your, your following this and that. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the work on my behalf. And like, man, I just, my jaw dropped. I was just like, wow, really? Like, you know, I got to throw you money for this because that's a lot of work that you're doing. And he's like, no, if you try to throw me money, I'm just going to give it right back to you. So. I can't, uh, I can't thank Scott enough for taking on this project and doing this for me. It means a lot. Everybody means a lot. Like all you guys that come to the channel and continue to support me and everybody else out there, you just, I, I, I'm so incredibly grateful for the following that I have, you know, with all you guys and all the great guys at Motor City, just everybody in between that I, that I meet along the way and, or people that I don't even meet. It's just I, I never know who I'm reaching out there and, you know, how much they appreciate what I do. And I can't thank you guys enough for just all the support. It's just incredible. But, yeah, it was uh, – it felt really good to uh, have Scott take care of this for me because I was, I was really, really bummed out. I was not expecting to get that kind of news. Um, like I said, I thought it was just going to be, you know, a setup, uh, take care of that because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I tried everything to – to make it right, make it playable, and obviously there was some other stuff going on underneath the hood that I didn't know about. And uh, Scott made this thing right. I got it, like I said, I got it in drop G. I got Diadario. I'm trying to remember the gauge. I know the top string, my bottom rig, rather, uh, that's a 70. I'm trying to remember what the rest of the strings were. Either way, they're Diadario. Um, I prefer the XLs, like I've told you guys several times in these videos. I'm not an NYXL guy. I do not like those strings. They cost more and they sound shittier to me, at least to my ears. They dull out, they lose their tone faster. I just prefer the basic, you know, regular um, nickel wound XL strings, and that's what I got on here. So um, what I was actually going to do, I'm actually going to jump in. I know you guys probably want to hear what it sounds like, so I got uh, I got a few riffs. Uh, I got to build some drum tracks, but we'll get to that here in a minute. I will. And then, um, yeah, the next... The next section of the video, you'll see uh, me playing this thing and some of the stuff. These are going to be like old riffs that I had that were just, they're kind of off to the side ready for like a full song, but I just haven't quite got there yet. So yeah, we'll riff out on this thing a little bit. You guys can hear what it sounds like. <laughs>
guys, so that's going to do it for this video. Uh, once again, I want to thank Scott over at Motor City, the guitar tech. Freaking did an amazing job on this guitar. Can't thank you enough for everything. Uh, same thing with Marty, the owner at Motor City. He uh, He's done a lot for me as well. All, of, all the people at Motor City, incredible staff over there. Really, really bunch of great guys over there. Thank you guys so much. And thank all of you for watching the channel, continuing to support me. I really, really appreciate it. So I'll leave you guys with the metal horns and talk to you guys next time. Take care.